for anybody who's been using an iPhone, you probably felt a little bit left out watching the Gear VR and the Daydream and Cardboard and all these Android-based uh, um, devices for virtual reality. Jeff Powers is with us. He's the co-founder of Occipital. Hi, Jeff. Welcome. Hey. Uh, come on over here. All right. um, this, uh, you did something called the Structure Sensor, which was for the iPad, right? Right. And now this is your newest product. This is uh, the Bridge, a mixed reality headset for the iPhone. This is more than just VR. It's AR, too. Yeah. It's basically a hybrid between the two. You can do any kind of VR, uh, you've, any kind of mobile VR applications, such as things people would use with a cardboard traditionally, can be used in Bridge. But what's new and special about it is the fact that you actually can map your environment and then do AR or mixed reality, where you bring characters or whatever into the world with you. So that was right, Tango, right? That was yeah. Google's. Yeah, how does this stack up to Google Tango? Because obviously that's something the iPhone is lacking and you're kind of yeah. helping Apple uh, make up some lost ground here, but how does it stack up feature-wise? Yeah, so it's, it's similar. It's kind of like the features you would get on Tango, a little bit better, brought over to the iPhone. Um, in the sense that we can map the environment, we can track your position. We do what's called inside-out positional tracking. So you're familiar with, obviously, the Rift and the mm -hmm. Vive. And in those systems, you have, si you have stations. You have either a base station like Lighthouse or you have cameras like the mm -hmm. Rift. Those are doing outside-in tracking. They're looking at you. Right. But in our system, you're doing inside-out. You're looking out, and you don't actually have to set up the environment at all. It's, it's just automatically mapped and tracked. So all the sensors you need are right here. Are right here. It's kind of like the autonomous cars you were talking about. We're putting all the sensors in here. We don't even need to make the road smart. So I see an iPhone. It looks like you've got a lens on the camera. Yeah, so we have a lens here that doubles the field of vision of the iPhone. Put it, put it right here. We got a yeah. good shot of it. You, you can go. just point to it as you. So this is a, a kind of I've seen like the Allo clip, kind of a, something yeah. that goes in front of the camera that gives it a wide angle. It's just like the Allo clip. We made our own uh, five-element glass lens that doubles the FOV, but very similar to what the Allo clip does. Then what is this? So this is actually the product you mentioned. This is the structure sensor, but it's mounted oh, into the bridge headset, clever. and this gives you depth sensing. So this is an active depth sensor. It has an infrared camera, an infrared projector. It beams this information out onto the scene. It's a lot like a Kinect, and it's able to basically measure, instead of you know color picture pixels, it has essentially depth pixels. It knows how far things are in the world. And it can also track motion and kind of map the world as it goes along? Exactly. Nathan, you've played with Microsoft's HoloLens, right? Yes. This seems like it's better than HoloLens. I, I had some problems with HoloLens. Um, the, the field of view, the field is, of view really is basically limited. limited to a small rectangle in front of your face. So when you saw things, it was impressive. But a lot of times, you just didn't see anything at all, if, especially on the corners and your kind of right. periphery. And in trying this, that problem doesn't seem to exist here. Yeah, I mean, this is for a uh, lot much less wider, too, I might add. Yeah, it's about a tenth of the price of the HoloLens. I wow. mean, the HoloLens, let's not knock it. It's an amazing device. I mean, it's a see-through system, which is very hard to pull off. Um, but if you want to get into mixed reality at a lower price point mm -hmm. and you want to use a device you already have, like the iOS, like an iPhone, um, Bridge is a great device. Three ninety nine, you're going to be available in March. One of the advantages Android has, though, is because there's a rich ecosystem of uh, virtual reality, there's a lot of apps. How are you? Th there aren't any apps on iOS. Actually, not really true. So Google, Google actually helped a little bit here, and they came out with a cardboard SDK oh, that's, that's right. available okay. on iOS, too. Okay. So you have things like uh, Discovery Channel VR. You have the cardboard app. You have okay. some horror apps. You got some, a bunch of roller coasters. You got a bunch of stuff. OK. Can we get a demo? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So the demo. Um, and uh, you're going to give it a try, right? Yeah, sure, I'll give oh, it a try. Oh, we're so going to make Nathan do it. We're going to make right, Nathan good. do it. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm so actually going to... just gonna... for a description of people listening, it's kind of, it looks about like a Gear VR. It's a lightweight plastic holder for your phone with the addition of that wide-angle camera lens and the sensor up top, which is... Is it infrared? Is it a Z sensor? What is... It's a Z, it's a Z sensor. It determines distance. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And... Um, yeah, a couple of cool features on the actual hardware itself. We have I this love sideways opening door. So it's got a door, so you can actually use the phone without taking it out. Yeah, in fact. <laughs> That's a big problem. Kind of hilarious. Uh, I've even had someone take a call like this before. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gotta <laughs> um, do what you gotta do. You know? That's but uh, yeah, it, it's perfectly um, designed to exactly match the phone you have. That way we can align the camera and everything. We use anodized aluminum to rigidly mount everything. Mm -hmm. Easy to open close, it's magnetic. So you oh, don't, there's nice. no latch, it's really easy. Uh, and in the back, we have a, a ratchet system. So when do you, you find that because on, you're going to be in the Apple in the Apple market, you've got to do a little bit more in terms of fit and finish and 
and uh, and and luxury because it's a it's a demanding market, right? It's not like the Android market. Yeah, you have to you have to make your device feel like it it's meant it's, to work with an iOS nice. device. Yeah. yeah, this looks this is great. The expectation is the high there. For you. Yeah. All right, and so if you, if you go over, over move over, yeah, a little bit, Nathan, because you can see we're seeing on the screen what Nathan's seeing. Of course, he's seeing it in stereo. But that's the, the, the 2D version of it. Let me see your controller real quick. There you go. Oh, there's a little oh, controller. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's really simple. It's really just a one button click. And uh, then you got this oh, little you robot, made a robot guy. Show up. <laughs> yeah. So that's Bridget. Hi, Bridget. And and so Nathan, that looks like it's a real robot there on the on the floor. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. It looks like something out of a video game, pretty much in the real world and and uh, you can actually kind of see the, the scene, and Bridget wow. just moves around. I hate to say it, but this is so much better than HoloLens <laughs> in terms of at least field of view. Uh, you have an advantage. You have a very powerful computer. You don't have to make a Windows 10 computer fit in the visor. You've got an Apple iPhone. Which iPhones does this work with? So this works with the 6, the 6S, and the 7. We recommend it on the 6S or the 7 for processing yeah, power. Yeah. I bet you really can take advantage of the 7, though. Oh, but yeah. Then, whoa! What are you doing? I'm playing catch with it, actually. Oh, my God. Look at that. So it's fetch, yeah. Yep. That's fun. So Bridget comes with a few features. Bridget is basically a developer. It's, a, it's an app, and it's also a developer sample. It's mostly open source. So we ah. put this thing out for developers to this create their own. It's yeah, a reference. Yeah, nice. So if you're a developer uh, and you want to work in mixed reality, you want to work in augmented reality. Um, <laughs> Look at that. Bridges for you. So uh, you work in Swift, Objective C. How do you develop? You can use Swift, Objective C. We have a Unity plugin for positionally tracked VR. One of the cool things is if there's an existing mobile VR app written in Unity, you can use our plugin in about 10 minutes. You upgrade it with positional oh, tracking. That's nice. You can port it over. Yeah. Oh, that's really nice. And one of the things that this can do is it can actually make you move between AR and VR, right? Yeah, so if you, if you click that menu on Bridget again, mm -hmm. um, and you're noticing Bridget's actually avoiding obstacles, so click the one on the far right. Okay. And there's two things we can do. One, if you click on the wall here, you can actually create a portal to a bookstore that we actually scan. <laughs> uh, don't go in there now, Nathan. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a fake. It's a trap. <laughs> if you see me hitting my head on the wall, you know why. <laughs> Gee, you put a hole in our wall. That is freaking cool. Holy cow. And if he clicks on the ground, um, you can create, like, maybe down at your feet here. All right. And you'll actually create a portal to a VR scene that you can walk inside of. So you're moving out of the augmented reality into the full virtual reality world at this point. Exactly. And as soon as he steps across, you'll see that we actually bring things from the world back in as an obstacle avoidance map so that he oh, essentially I doesn't see. run into it. Yeah, them. so it won't, yeah. But you have to keep looking at the map or else it'll okay. stop tracking. Very cool. So it's like I'm in a, in a space station, basically. Right. But as you approach that TV, you can see it's actually brought into your view so you don't crash into it. Yeah, <laughs> Vive does the same thing to kind of give you a wireframe, make sure you... And if I just walk back through the store... Yep. Then I'm back in... Reality. Re real reality. Oh, this is <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm kind of blown away. I mean, I, I, you're competing against one of the largest corporations <laughs> in the world... And you're beating them, frankly. In a Two way. Two of the largest corporations, Google and Microsoft. You know, what we're really trying to do is actually power some of these corporations, right? Some of the people that want to build their own headsets, we have the tech to essentially upgrade them with bridge-like capabilities. Right. So in a way, bridge, you know, bridge, anybody can buy bridge. Anybody can use it for mobile VR. You can take it on the road with you. You can develop if you're a developer. But if you're a company building your own device, we have the tech to put inside. And hopefully, this time next year, we'll be back on the show with you know three or four headsets that so are powered So this is really your long run. This in itself is a reference platform. In the long run, what you'd like to do uh, is, is sell the, the structure sensor and the, and the software and the technology to companies that want to make their own exactly. headsets. Exactly. We'd like to power really cool. a bunch of different devices. Jeff Powers, what, what's your background? How did, you, how did you get into this? So I was an electrical engineer that was always a software guy Yeah. Uh, and graduated from school and didn't really want to go work anywhere, and so I started Occipital. And I did stuff like mobile uh, apps. We did an app to do barcode scanning early on in the days of the company. I found it actually in 2008. We did Red Laser, if you've ever heard of oh, that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm a huge fan. That exactly. was the scanning program. The scanning app. We, oh, we were yeah, pushing of the limits. I knew of, I knew the name Occipital. <laughs> pushing what you could actually do on the right. camera. There was right. a question, could you even access it in that way? And, right. um, and we ended up selling that product to eBay and then we just kept going, and we we always wanted to do augmented reality. 
And in fact, we tried to do AR way back then, but nobody would invest in it. Right. Mm -hmm. Of right. course, right? The tide has turned. Oh, you, how many kidding. developers do you have already making apps for Bridge so, right now? So, I mean, for Structure Sensor, we have thousands of developers, but for, for, for Bridge, we just started, we just announced it last month and shipped the first units last month. We wow. announced and shipped a week later. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to do one of these, announce it and ship right. it maybe a year later. Uh, there's now hundreds of developers that are working on creating the first apps that should, uh, Hopefully, a handful of them will be available when we start shipping again uh, in in March. Where's so, the Where's the momentum? Is it Is it with uh, um, like things like retail? Is it Is it with games? Uh, I, I know a lot of AR apps that I've seen like basically get you into virtual museums and kind of put like dinosaurs in your house and things like this. But you know, where Where's the developer interest right now? So in, in mixed and augmented reality, I think you see a lot of business use cases. Mm -hmm. A lot of people wanting to maybe scan a job site, beam it to somebody else, and then interact remotely. You see that kind of thing. With games, you see things like bringing ghosts into your house and this mm -hmm. sort of stuff. So we, see a, we definitely see a lot of people that are just doing works of passion, wanting to create games and that sort of stuff. But in the business world, we're seeing a lot of remote collaboration type projects. This is just mind boggling. $3.99 wide availability in March. Um, both for developers and end users, and I'm sure Apple's going to come a calling and knock it on your door because this is a, a category Apple's already said. Tim Cook said several times he really wants to get into this category. Um, I think it's one of the next big things, frankly, AR particularly. Um, I'm very excited about it. And one cool thing, by the way, is that Bridge, uh, you can buy it now and use it with your 6S or your 7, and We've actually designed it to be upgradable. Oh, that's nice. So, of course, we don't know what the next iPhone will look like, but let's assume it's not too different than this. Um, we can actually produce just this front element, this phone oh, enclosure. Okay. Very good, very and good. And you can keep Smart. the sensor. Smart. Minimal get new, investment. Get a new enclosure. And you've got a new Brilliant. enclosure. You've got a new nice. enclosure. Brilliant. Jeff, you're on your, This is going to be awesome. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah, occipital. Jeff Powers and Bridge is the product. And what's the website so people can go there? and? So you can go to bridge.occipital.com. Okay. And uh, starting in March, pick up your, I'm going to buy one immediately. I think that's really, really cool.